Welcome back, Dragons. We're on to Activity 2.4, where we're going to evaluate those algebraic expressions. Now, some of the classes got to touch upon this briefly before we had to leave. This is when we substitute values in. And if you were with me for part of first or second period the other day, you know that we put in these step-by-step -step notes which are really great because they keep it really simple for you. Now, we'll try to complete this with the other class periods when we return to school, but this, these are what the steps are. If you have an expression such as 9x plus 6y, currently, without substitution values, you would be unable to evaluate that expression. But they tell us what x is and they tell us what y is, so we just put them in. The expression and follow the order of operations. So if x is worth 2, now it's 9 times 2. If y is worth 4, now it's 6 times 4. As you can see, they substituted the values of the variables, they rewrote the expression, they used the order of operations to multiply first, and then they added. So that is the procedure that I'm going to go continue on with for activity 2.4. So let's get started. To an evaluate an algebraic expression means to determine the value of the expression for a given value of each variable. That just means, basically, solve it when we tell you what the variable is worth. When you evaluate an algebraic ex expression, you substitute the given values for the variables and then determine the value of the expression. One little note over here, don't forget to use order of operations when evaluating an algebraic expression. And I agree with that note. It'd be really easy to get mixed up but it's still relevant, so let's highlight that. Write a sentence to describe the meaning of each algebraic expression. Then evaluate the algebraic expression for the given value. What do they mean by write a sentence to describe? I think they mean, let's take a look at 1a closely together, 3 times x minus 4. 3 times a number minus 4. 4 less than 3 times a number. I mean, it's all those translations we were working on in the previous lesson. It could be anything of that nature. 3 times x minus 4. 3 times x minus 4. Okay, so that's part A. We did a two-parter there on the directions. Next, evaluate it. Okay. This is where the good stuff happens. They tell us that x is 10. So wherever I see x, I'm going to replace x with 10. And I'm going to continue with the operation that's already indicated. 3x minus 4. 3 and x are multiplied. 3, 10 minus 4. 3 times 10 minus 4. Okay, I'm going to take care of this part first, because if I was using order of operations, I'm going to multiply first. I got 30, take away the 4, and if I'm thinking correctly, 26, voila, your happy answer. All right. I want you to pause the video for a moment. I want you to try B, C, and D independently. And then when you've calculated those, press resume on your video so you can check your work with me. Now I'm going to move on to B. 11 minus S. Written as words. 11 minus s. s is now worth 2. So if it's 11 minus s, it's 11 minus 2, which is the same as 9. That's the answer. Okay, we've got 10 minus z. 10 minus z. z is worth 8. 10 minus z turns into 10 minus 8. 10 minus 8, 2. Excellent work, dragons. Now we've got a ah, two-parter. 5 minus y divided by 4. 5 minus, the answer key calls it, the quantity y divided by 4. The quantity y divided by 4. 
So let's calculate it. We've got 5 take away y over 4. I'm going to substitute the value of y. y is indicated as being worth 2. 5 minus 2 over 4. Well, normally, you know, you would do the division first. But I'm looking at this, and I see that this is 1 half. 2 fourths is the same as 1 half. Really, they're asking me to say 5 minus a half. To me, that's uh, 4 and a half. Checking the answer key, 4 and a half it is. Happy answer. All right, I hope you did well on those practice problems right there. Let's move on to the next page. Okay, two more similar. Pause the video, try out E and F. All right, let's evaluate for E and F. First, let's translate it into words. 7 plus the quantity 5 times A. 7 plus the quantity 5 times A. All right, how do we evaluate that? We replace A with the number 20. I start out as 7 plus 5A. Here's A. 7 plus 5 times 20. Check that out. You just replace it. Now, you still got to use your order of operations. So what are you going to do next? Ah, yes. This. 7 plus 100. 107. Happy, happy, happy. Hope you got that one right. Let's try this one. B divided by 4. They're probably going to call it the quantity of B divided by 4. Let's just say B divided by 4. B is 8. So if I start as B over 4 and I replace it to 8 over 4, 8 over 4 is uh, going to turn into a nice whole number for us, which is 2. 2 is your answer. Happy answer. Now on part two, they have all these tables in which they want to change the value in which the variable is going to be. And if you change what the variable is worth, the expression isn't going to have the same answer each and every time. For example, this time, h is going to be worth 2. So you're going to be 3 times 2 minus 2, which is 6 minus 2, which is 4. Right there, you would be 4. But if I continue and say this time that h is worth 7 thirds, which is an unusual number, we would evaluate 3 times 7 thirds minus 2. If some of you are thinking about cross-canceling, you're thinking good. It's 7 minus 2 equals 5. That cross-canceling that just happened there, I'll show you that in person. Now this time h is worth 5.1. So 3 times 5.1 subtract 2. Notice that the expression doesn't change. What h is worth changes. So 3 times 5 is 15 times 0.1 would be 15.3 minus 2. I think we're looking at 13.3. Yep, 13.3. Last, 5, 6. 3 times 5, 6 minus 2. Let's see, 3 times 5 is 15. 15 over 6 minus 2. 15 over 6 is not a nice pretty number, is it? So let's try 2 and 3, 6. Minus 2. Is that going to leave us 3, 6, which is 1 half? Which is 1 half. Checking the answer key for you. Yes. There we go. All right, pause the video. Try these other ones out. C looks more reasonable because it's got less fractions going on. If you really get hung up on the fractions of the decimals, pull out your calculator. I want you to practice the substitution more than I need you to practice fractions and decimals at this moment. Pause the video, give B, C, and D a try. Okay, I hope you took a moment to try those out. I'm going to move on to part B. 1 plus 0 equals 1. 1 plus 2 thirds equals 1 and 2 thirds. 1 plus 4 equals 5. 
and 1 plus 1 and 7 tenths equals 2 and 7 tenths. The answer key also called this one 5 thirds. Next, this one has a lot of steps going on. So you've got 2 times 1 divided by 3 plus 1. So you've got 2 thirds plus 1, that's going to equal 1 and 2 thirds. Now you've got 2 times 2 over 3 plus 1. That's 4 thirds plus 1. 4 thirds plus 1 is 1 and 1 third plus 1, which is 2 and 1 third. We've got 2 times 5 over 3. That's 10 thirds plus 1. 10 thirds plus, let's see, 10 thirds plus 1. 1 could be equivalent to 3 over 3, so we've got 13 over 3 would be your improper fraction. And I could simplify that to 4 and 1 third. Okay, and then last but not least, substitute as 11, that would be 22 over 3 plus 1. We could just make... 1 more 3 over 3. I'm doing that to get those like denominators so I can add simply the numerators. I've got 25 over 3. Let's see, 3 goes into 25 8 times with a remainder of 1. 8 and 1 third. I hope you got that right. Last, 1 half P. So, 0 0.5 times 0, guess what that's worth? A whole lot of nothing. That's what it's worth. All right, 1 half of 1 is a half. That's all you got. 1 half of 1 and a half. I think that's 0 0.75. And then 1 half of 2 and a half. That is 1 in 25 hundred. Again, if you got stuck on the multiplication here, pull out your calculator, test these again using a calculator. That concludes activity 2.4, evaluating algebraic expressions. Remember that the evaluation is a simple substitution process. Well, if you didn't get that page in your interactive notebook while we were still here, I will try to get it to you as soon as possible when we return. Thank you.